Hi, I'm Dennis Brothers with the National Poultry Technology Center and the Alabama Cooperative Extension System. In the commercial poultry industry, it is very important that growers pay close attention to their farm's backup systems. The generator, transfer switch, alarms, and backup thermostats are all vitally important in cases of power loss or controller failure. During long-term power outages, these systems are put to the test. Therefore, it is important that growers understand how these systems work, how to maintain them between uses, and how to make sure they will stand up in long-term outage situations. To further discuss these issues, let's go to a farm, examine these components, and discuss ways to make sure they are there when you need them and will hold up to the pressure of a long-term outage. Of these systems, the generator is a primary concern. Let's start there. The most obvious and important part of our backup system is, of course, our generator and all the components surrounding that generator. The first place we always look is the first place we always have problems with generator systems, and that's our fuel. Fuel is always the most problematic part of a generator system. When we talk about fuel in a generator system, the first place to look is always a fuel tank. This fuel tank is under a shed, which is good. It would be better if we were completely enclosed. The key here is to make sure we avoid all possible entrance of water into our tank. We've got to look at our fuel field, our caps, our fuel hoses. Every place water can get into the tank, make sure it's sealed and water can't get in there. Moisture is the primary enemy of our fuel system and our generator. Two of the more common questions we have are fuel additives and rotating fuel in our tanks. The only fuel additives that are any real benefit in a diesel tank are biocides that fight the microflora and bacteria that grow in diesel fuel and water dispersers, once again trying to mitigate the problem of the moisture in our tank. It's always good to rotate fuel in the tank. You can use it for supplying fuel to your tractor or other implements on a farm, but be sure you keep it full. One of the best ways to fight moisture in a fuel tank is by keeping the tank full to fight condensation. So if you do rotate your, your fuel or use the fuel for, for a long term outage, make sure you keep it full as best as possible. It's always better to refill the tank during use before it gets below half empty. This lessens our chance for picking up particulates and sludge from the bottom of the tank and clogging up our generator fuel system. Checking for moisture in our generator fuel tank is very important. As we see here, a serviceman is using color indicating water finding paste to check the moisture in the bottom of a tank. Water being heavier than fuel, it will sink to the bottom of the tank. As we see, there's no color change on the end of our broomstick, so this tank is in good shape. In this slide, we see a fuel tank pickup tube pulled out so we can notice the length. The end of this tube is four to five inches above the bottom of the tank where moisture and sludge will accumulate over time. Having the tube this high will keep us from sucking this material into our system and causing us problems. During a long-term power outage, it is important that a grower know the fuel consumption rate of the generator system. Using this chart from dieselserviceandsupply.com, we see that a typical 125 kW generator under a half load will use approximately 5 gallons of fuel per hour. Therefore, a 500 gallon tank of fuel will supply this system for about four days. However, if this was under hot weather conditions where the system was using a heavier load, the tank of fuel would not last as long. And if your drop tube is installed correctly as we have just said, a 500 gallon tank will not yield 500 gallons of fuel. So knowing the consumption rate of your system is imperative during long term outages. Also, it's always best practice to refill your tank before it gets below half full. This helps keeps us from stirring up the sludge in the bottom of the tank. Next we're going to look at the overall generator shed. Here we have an open generator shed so air is not a problem. We'll look at enclosed generator sheds in a minute and talk about proper inlet and exhaust signs. There's not a problem here. We also have a very clean generator shed. This is a good thing. We can get to our generator, we can service it, we can take care of any problems. Always keep your generator sheds free of debris and anything that's getting in your way during a long term outage having to maintain your system. Also we have a good exhaust pipe on this system. Notice this exhaust pipe extends out past the generator shed. This is very important. When you have a short pipe, the exhaust and soot can be recirculated back into our generator as it's trying to run. Problem? Here is an air filter on a generator with a short exhaust pipe covered up with soot and coal dust from burning diesel fuel exhaust. This will shut a generator down. That's why it's important for us to have 
a properly extended exhaust pipe on our generator sheds. A good annual generator maintenance should always include new fuel filters, oil filters, and air filters. This is very important. If you are going to run into long-term situations, you should always have extra fuel filters on hand because this is the weakest link in this whole system. During long-term runs, we have often seen stopped up fuel filters shut the entire system down. Having a few extras on hand is cheap insurance. I'd recommend at least six or eight on hand. That sounds like a lot, but we have seen long-term outages growers change as many as four and five at a time trying to keep a system running. Oil filters and oil. We often get a lot of questions if I'm under a long-term run, do I need to shut the generator down to change the oil? The question is no if I have a good, well-maintained system to start with. This system was upgraded and maintained this month. So, this generator should have no problem running 15 to 20 hours without having to change the oil. It is recommended, though, under long-term run situations, to shut the generator down about every 72 hours, long enough to check the oil and add any if needed. We'll go through the procedures to do that properly in just a minute. Air filters are another question we often have. This air filter, while it looks fairly good, is a year old and it's full of micro particles that this filter is designed to filter out. It needs to be changed once a year, even if it looks good. Blowing this filter off with an air compressor is not going to be sufficient. We need to change our filters once a year and keep a spare on hand for during long-term run times. You may want to check your filter and change it sometime during that extended outage period. The battery is the lifeblood of our generator. Without this battery, we won't start. So we need to make sure we change our battery once every two years, irregardless. Keep the old one around, put it in a tractor, whatever you want to do. We start to put a new battery on the generator once every two years. And also, we need to make sure that our battery tender, our backup charger, is in working order and doing its job properly so our battery is hot and ready to go whenever we need it. All of our modern generator systems have some type of computer control or electronic control box like we see here that start and operate our generators. The problem is these are subject to lightning and electronic failures. If this box fails, there's only one way to start your generator. Without a manual keyed backup start switch like we see here, a bypass switch, there's no way to start the generator if our electronic control goes down. Often these do not come on a generator system, but like we see here, they can be added later as an add-on item. Without this manual startup switch, if our computer control goes down, there's no way to start this generator in the terms of a power outage. A well-maintained generator system under proper maintenance program should have its radiator and the radiator core flushed and cleaned once every two years. If that's the case, radiators should have no problem maintaining during a long-term power outage. However, when we shut the generator down every 72 hours to check our oil, we should also check the fluid levels in our radiator. Anytime a generator has to be shut down and restarted, it is important that specific older events be followed on the restart to avoid possible severe damage to your generator. Such a restart might be needed in the case of a long-term power outage to check the oil level or radiator coolant. You can find an easy to follow step-by-step -step guide for this procedure on the NPTC website, poultryhouse.com. To quickly demonstrate the steps to restart a generator while backup power is being called for, you first must individually turn off the breakers or switches for each individual house at the generator shed. Next, check your automatic transfer switch to be sure it is in the neutral position. If it is not, then you must make that switch using the digital control or the manual lever option. With the transfer switch in the neutral position, you can now start the generator. This can be done automatically through the transfer switch by using the control matter on the generator, or if there is damage to the generator control by using the manual keyed backup start switch. Once the generator is up and running at full speed, you can then check to see that the transfer switch moves back into generator power mode automatically. If not, manually move the switch using the lever inside. Once the generator is up and running and transfer switch is in backup mode, then you can one by one turn each house back online, allowing time between each house for the generator to recover to full RPM before switching on the next house. Besides generators, there are other backup systems that must be attended to during an extended power outage. 
Here we have a photo of a traditional manual thermostat backup tree. These manual thermostats would be used to control the poultry house fans, tunnel curtains, cool cells, and heaters in the case of a computer control failure. The problem with these thermostats is they are not precision tools. There are almost always multiple fans on a single thermostat and they can easily be as much as 10 degrees off from the setting they show on the dial. And to operate them in a long term outage they would have to be adjusted daily or more often. This unreliability and variance makes them difficult to use and limits their abilities to control the house. Often this results in growers simply setting them too high or too low to ever be of any help in an emergency. The other problem is that these thermostats reside inside the grow out chamber where dust and debris quickly accumulate making them further unreliable and inaccurate for temperature control. As often as we see here, the dust gets so thick that the dials can't even be read if you were trying to. A much better alternative is digital thermostats using sensor probes for backups. Here we see easy to read, easy to set digital thermostats being used as backups. These can easily be set as needed as they are located in the control room by the controller. The probes do not get affected by dust and debris and they are highly accurate within one degree or less. To further increase the flexibility and controllability of your backup thermostat system, the use of an enhanced backup relay box can greatly help in this area. Now although multiple fans may be on a single backup thermostat, a grower can now choose how many fans or zones of heat or any other component he wants a single thermostat to operate at different points in the grow out simply by flipping a switch. However, it is important to note, as can be seen in the lower right hand of this slide, if the switch is turned to inactive or off, that component will not operate no matter what the thermostat is telling it to do, so be very careful. The next step in the technology of backup systems is a controller integrated backup system like the one shown here. These type backups are like many controllers, able to do much what the controller does, just on a smaller scale. These type systems talk to the controller and set themselves in line with the controller, or you can program your own secondary control systems into them. Either way, you no longer have to manually adjust your backup system on a daily basis with this type system, greatly increasing your flexibility during a long-term power outage. The next system we must give attention to during an extended power outage is our alarm. The problem we have seen here are with the small 12 volt batteries that are often part of some component of the alarm system. These batteries may be in an off-site component of the system, like in the dwelling house or in a repeater station between the houses and the residence, and not being charged by the generator power during an extended power outage. After a few days, these batteries go dead and you no longer have off-site alarm capabilities. Also, we have seen situations where phone lines, cell phone towers are down from snow or ice or tornadoes, making off-site alarms unusable. These are things every grower needs to investigate about their alarm system and be prepared for the worst. All these components of our generator system have to all work in concert together. Very important, all these maintenance items are looked at closely and kept up to date and kept in good working order. It's always a good recommendation while you're out of chickens to turn some fans on, turn some lights on, put your system under a real world oral test. Let your generator carry your houses for a day, a day or two, and make sure if it's going to work when you need it. The worst thing we can do is make the assumption that it's going to be there when we need it.